This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. To wrap up the series of tutorials on understanding the Encore workflow and workspace, I'm going to talk about how you adjust Encore preferences. And to do that, we're going to open up Encore in a different way this time, just to show you how that works. Go to the Working Files folder, open up the Encore Projects subfolder, and then double click on 0206 Preferences. Now it'll open up Encore that way, with this project front and center. The thing is, this project is empty. I just want to use it as a way to change the preferences, or at least look at the preferences. To access preferences, go to the Edit menu inside Windows, or the Encore menu inside Mac. Click that, and go down to Preferences. And you see these eight options here, eight different sets of properties. You can click on any one. It doesn't make any difference. It'll open up the same dialog box, the Preferences dialog box, with those eight things here down on the left-hand side. We're just going to run through all of these things from top to bottom. So the default television standard is NTSC right now. You can make that PAL if you want, but it really doesn't make any difference what you choose here because you can change this when you start a new project. The playback quality refers to how things look inside the preview panel when you're previewing your project. What automatic means is that you view things in draft mode when it plays, but when it stops playing, it goes into pause, then you see it in a higher quality mode. So if you choose automatic, it'll be a little bit fuzzy when you play it back, but then sharp when you pause it. If you choose Draft, it'll be a little bit fuzzy in both instances. And if you choose High, it'll be high quality in both instances. So I prefer High. And then it says Desktop Display Mode. This is the kind of display card that you have in your computer. And I have an accelerated GPU in mind because I have one for Premiere Pro. And so I can select that. And so the playback will be a little bit sharper here inside Encore. But it's not that dramatic. It really is much more important if you're going to use this kind of a card that you're using it with Premiere. Down here it says transcode assets using Adobe Media Encoder application. What you can do when you're working in Encore is you can transcode your assets in advance before you get to the end. Now my typical workflow is I just set up the whole navigation and all the menus and that kind of stuff. And then I go build the DVD or the Blu-ray or the Flash project. And when I do that, I transcode all the assets that need to be transcoded at that point. And I just have it done automatically inside Encore. I go out of the room and go get a coffee or something because it takes a while to do all the transcoding. But if you want to transcode as you work on your project, then that basically stops your work as Encore transcodes things. So to avoid having things stop, you can click this button if you want to transcode on root, basically, and have the Adobe Media Encoder handle the transcoding. And it's a separate program that runs in the background. So if you want to continue working inside Encore while you're transcoding your assets, you can check that, and the transcoding will be done by the Media Encoder. The appearance is how your desktop looks. Right now I'm set to the default setting. I can make the desktop darker like that, or make it lighter, basically reverse it so it's a white or light background with dark text. I'm going to go for the default so that we're basically on the same page here. Viewers refers to how you see the various things here, timelines, menus, slideshows, and chapter playlists. It's a little confusing. It's not how you see them up here in the monitor. It's how you see them down here in the timeline area or elsewhere. Right now, only timelines is checked by default. What this means is, if you have more than one timeline in your project, then you'll see a separate tab for all the timelines down here. If you click on slideshows, then if you have multiple slideshows, you'll see separate tabs for the slideshows. If it's unchecked, then all these slideshows will be stored inside one tab with the drop-down list. Same thing is true for menus. When you view menus up here inside the menus viewer, you could have multiple tabs if you wanted to, to go from one menu to the next. But the default workflow is generally to have all the menus in one tab. So you have a little drop-down list here for all the menus. Same thing for chapter playlists as well. So the default way I think is fine. You have separate tabs down here for your timelines. You have one tab for slideshows. You usually don't have more than one. And this is a good way to do things. But you can have multiple tabs if you want to do it that way. Show tooltips is fine. That means when you hover over something and there's a tooltip for that, the tooltip will show up. After a while, though, you might get a little tired of seeing tooltips, so you can turn it off here. Beep on render. When you're done rendering, when you're done transcoding, it'll beep saying we're done. And then seek bright poster. What this means is lots of videos, when they start, they start by fading up. They dissolve up from black. And so the first frame where you might have a chapter marker will be black. And so if you have a poster frame inside a button, it'll be a black poster, which is not what you want. And so what Encore does is it looks for the first bright frame, the sort of fully exposed frame and uses that inside your thumbnail instead of a black image inside of the thumbnail. So it's good to seek the bright poster frame, so I'd keep that checked. 
audio video out. This is the output too, so you can hear what's going on. It's not a big deal, but you select your device here from whatever devices you've got hooked up to your computer. And mine's just the little speakers there through my Creative Labs card. And over here is this desktop audio for output. Accept that, or you go to Adobe DV. Adobe DV is something new now for Encore. What Adobe DV does now lets you hook up an IEEE 1394 FireWire connection to your computer to a monitor. And then you can watch the display. You can watch the preview or the monitor panel over here or the menu panel over here, the menu viewer, and see all those things inside a television monitor connected to your computer. And that way you really see how it's going to look on a TV set or on a TV monitor. So if you have a TV set or monitor connected to your computer via an IEEE 1394 FireWire cable, then do set things up through this Adobe TV option. And disable video output when in background, that means when the program is running in the background and you've got something else going on, you turn off the display to the monitor. Media is just where you store your library content. By default, it's stored wherever you stored the Adobe Encore CS6. There'll be a library folder over there. If you click on it, you'll see if you scroll down a little bit. There's Encore. There'll be a library folder inside wherever you stored Encore. But if you want to put the library assets, which are the guys that show up over here, someplace else, feel free to do that. And then you can connect them via this location here. We'll take the media cache files and the media cache database. We'll just accept the defaults for that. These are temporary storage places for things as you're working on them inside Encore. Write XMP IDs to files on import is an option that's on by default. I've switched it off. What Write XMP IDs does is creates little files to help all the various Adobe applications communicate with each other to recognize that you've got the same asset that you're using in multiple applications so they don't duplicate things like preview files. So I turn it off for now because it adds a whole bunch of files to the working files every time I open up something, and I want to avoid that to avoid sort of confusing things down the road. But you can turn that on or off. These are really small files. I just don't want to clutter up the working files folder. Memory talks about how much memory you allocate for Encore and how much you leave for other applications. Now, I've got this relatively high right now because I'm not running applications in the background, but you can adjust this if you want to. Menus talks about how the buttons are routed on the menus. So when you route up and down inside a column, for example, then what happens when it gets to the bottom of the column? You can say, well, I want it to go back to the top of that column, or you can have it jump to the next column. The thing is, you can manually route buttons, so you can override this later. So deciding one or the other here, whether it's going to route to the same column or the next column, is not so critical because you can always update this. When you're going left to right, what happens when you get to the end of the line? Do you go to the next line down or you go back to the same row? Again, that's the same issue. I'm going to stay in the same row for the default setting, but I could have it bumped to the next one as a default. Exclude next previous buttons. It's a little confusing. You're not excluding them, meaning when you make a menu, they just disappear. Well, that's not going to happen. What that means is they're excluded from the routing or routing, as some people say. They're not included in the up, down, or left, right routing. That's what exclude means. You can uncheck that if you want. Then here's the option for button synchronization defaults. You can have the name of the button change to whatever the link's name is if you check that. Or when you type in a name inside the properties panel over here for that button, then you can have that name then show up inside the button over here. So I like this default. So whenever I type something in under the button's property over here, then that name shows up as the name for the button. I prefer that. But it's kind of convenient to set a name from the link if the link is exactly the name that you want to use for the button. And again, you can always override these things. So the preview defaults are how things look inside the preview monitor when you're previewing your project. And what this means is it's trying to simulate how things would look on a TV set and how things would look with how you set up your remote for your DVD playback or your Blu-ray playback. And so if you're watching this in North America, if you're watching it in English, you would probably have these be the defaults when you played it back. But if you're in some other country, you can change these guys as the default view. So if you have subtitles running inside your project, you may want to change them to a different default. And notice these are the defaults for all DVDs so that when you click the subtitle button on your remote, you can access them by the language. And the preview quality of playback is high here, and I just keep it at high. Finally, the timelines, it's similar. How do your timelines open up when you open up a new timeline? You know, we've got a still image duration of six seconds, so we add a still image to the timeline that'll last for six seconds, but you can change that if you want. Subtitle, same kind of a thing. What's this default audio language? Again, I'm working here in North America, so I set mine to English for a subtitle and language. How many audio tracks will show up when I make a new timeline? Just one, but I can change that to add more, but I can always add more audio tracks later. 
how many subtitle tracks show up. Right now it's zero because I don't normally add subtitles, but I can always add a subtitle track. This is just how the default timeline looks when you open up a new timeline. So that's a brief rundown on the eight different options here inside the Preferences panel. My guess is you'll accept the defaults for most of these things, but there are a few things you might want to do to customize your workspace. And when you're done working inside here, remember to click OK to accept all those preference changes.